When these videos emerged, pundits and politicians took them as gospel, the truth, conclusive, indisputable and irrefutable proof of Assad's chemical sins. The chemical weapon that killed dozens of civilians here. Canisters that the Assad regime has previously used in chemical attacks. The Assad regime has used the same yellow gas canisters. The NSC telling Fox News they have a high degree of confidence that it was used. They must have had solid evidence. You don't just launch a hundred cruise missiles in an act of war without convincing proof beyond any doubt, right? Right? Wrong. We were in the basement and then heard someone outside scream, go to hospital. We were scared. They started to pour water on me. I don't know why they did this. Pundits and politicians who've never been to Syria swear it happened. Witnesses, locals who were there in the hospital in question say they didn't see a thing. All they saw was white helmets dousing confused civilians with water. Neither did the doctors see anything. On the 7th of April, I was in the emergency room treating patients injured during the fighting. The same day, around 7 p.m., we started receiving patients with breathing problems, about 15 cases. This happened because people were inhaling smoke and dust. They only showed symptoms of choking and nothing more. It all happened because one missile hit a building nearby and a lot of dust got into the hospital rooms. The screams, chemical weapons, chemical weapons, were used to create panic. This lasted for about an hour. We were treating the patients and then sending them home. We had no fatalities or instances of people suffering from poisonous substances. This isn't helping. Western journalists, their leaders, insist it happened. Syria, Russia and locals insist it didn't. Dead end. If you don't understand normal language, let's try a different way. If you are impervious to our arguments, let us bring you the witnesses then. So Russia brought more than a dozen witnesses to the West, to the UPCW, and invited Western press. Perfect opportunity for journalists to get to the bottom of this, right? Right? How low do you have to go to bring a little child all the way here and threaten them? Right off the bat, denial. But here's the answer. We came here willingly. We demanded the Red Cross allow us to come here. Wrong answer. In truth, there isn't a right answer. No matter what you say to some people, no matter what you show them, they'll never, ever come around. Or change their views. How threatened do you have to feel to change your story and to deny a chemical weapons attack? Stubborn doesn't do this fellow justice. He's really the reason that boy had to fly over. Yes, Hassan is young, and it's been difficult for him to make it here. A flight here is no easy thing. Little Hassan has told you the truth something you do not want to hear. It was a necessary measure. We needed to show that there was a lie and a very dangerous one. Anyone who hoped there'd be a breakthrough was in for a disappointment. Hours of testimony and evidence all for naught. So you mentioned in a Russian press release that somebody here uh, was going to be present who was a witness of producing the video of the white helmets. And I was wondering where this witness is and if he can uh, tell his uh, testimony. It's my view. All these witnesses we heard from today are the evidence the white helmets film is fake. I don't know. Maybe I missed something. In one ear, out the other, with no pause in between. Britain, France and the US boycotted the chemical watchdog's hearing with the witnesses calling it a stunt. Experts from the OPCW are currently still in Syria to investigate the alleged chlorine or sarin gas attack on Douma. And we discussed the latest developments with the former UK ambassador to Syria, Peter Ford, and Middle East expert, Amar Wakaf.
Well, it, it will be uh, either either ignored or attempts will be made to downplay it and to undermine it. But I think when ordinary people see the, uh, the footage, the testimony, uh, they are bound to be impressed. What the uh, British media uh, are also failing to point out is that it was Russia and Syria which requested the OPCW mission. They requested it. Britain, America and France have still not to this day confirmed that they wanted the mission to, to go ahead. They refuse to see this as evidence, obviously pending what the uh, OPCW team is going to come up with. Uh, from Duma, it's highly unlikely that they would say, first of all, that there was a chemical attack. Well, these three actors were quick to do uh, what they did, to bomb the place, because they knew they didn't have a solid case. Um, they, they wanted to bomb without, with disregard to whatever was happening over there. So it shows, actually, that they knew that there was no chemical attack, but they were willing to do whatever it takes to assert their authority, or so they think, and say we're still on the table.